Thanks for clicking. The Canadian Real Estate Association just released its data for the month of January, showing a continual drop in sales and prices across Canada. The data comes as Canada's bond yields are continuing to surge, with mortgage rates following, as investors increasingly bet that the Bank of Canada is going to have to end its pause and raise rates further. But the data was also accompanied by some predictions made by CREA's chief economist Sean Cathcart, who argues that with the Bank of Canada's interest rates plateauing, the 2023 housing market could prove very resilient, similar to 2019. Okay, we're going to clip that part for November or December show, and we'll re we'll revisit how truthful uh, or how that came to be. But um, okay, so let's let's. <laughs> Yeah, look at the change in Cathcart's face after the brief laugh-off following the Freudian slip. But what does the data tell us? Is 2023's housing market that similar to 2019's that we can expect a comparable resilience? So what I want to do today is go over Canada's real estate data for the month of January, take a look at 2019's real estate market and how it compares with 2023, and then discuss what to look for next. Speaking of next, we are expecting to get Canada's inflation data in for the month of January next Tuesday, and we'll obviously have updates out on that data on this channel. Click like and subscribe if you want to get those updates, but for now, let's get into this data. On to the data. First off, the benchmark price. The benchmark price, that's the price of a home, which represents the most popular set of features. The benchmark price was down in January. December's benchmark price was $730,600, and that dropped down to $714,700 in January. So that's a $16,000 drop in one month's time. And the average price was also down in January. The average price in December was $626,318, and that dropped down to $612,204 in January. So that's about another $14,000 drop between December and January. We also saw the number of listings increase by 3% between December and January, and we saw the amount of sales fall by 3% as well. So we have continual price drops in January with the benchmark price down about 16K, the average price down about 14K. We saw listings up about 3%, and we saw sales were down about 3% as well. But, says the CREA, 2023 could still be a great year. Surprise. And in making these optimistic predictions for 2023, the CREA is depending on a comparison to 2019. According to the CREA's economist, Sean Cathcart, there are multiple similarities between now and 2019, in that in 2018, the year prior, we had seen multiple rate hikes from the Bank of Canada, we saw the imposition of the stress test, and we saw a major slowdown in activity in January of 2019. And you know, I think I've seen this movie before, uh, back in 2019. Um, some viewers uh, might remember 2018 was a really weak year for sales with the stress test. And we had three Bank of Canada hikes that year as well. Um, so we got into the winter of 2019 uh, and it was still dead quiet, but there was no listings. However, says Cathcart, buyers still came back to the table. Well, the weather warmed up. Listings hit the market, and sure enough, the activity took off. Indeed, while we did see a major slowdown in the housing market in January of 2019, by January of 2020, prices had risen around 10%, rising from 450k in January of 2019 all the way up to 504 in January of 2020. And something very similar could happen this year, says Cathcart. And we're looking at a very similar situation right now, I think. Uh, a weekend to 2022 following 400 basis points of rate hikes last year, uh, all quiet on the sales and listings fronts uh, for now in the dead of winter. Um, but what about two, three, four months from now when homes start to hit the market in big numbers? That's the question. So in 2019, after experiencing multiple rate hikes in 2018, buyers still came back to the table and prices and activity increased. But can we expect the same in 2023? In 2019, the average price of a home in January was sitting at 455k. The mortgage stress test was sitting at 5.14, meaning borrowers had to qualify at either 5.14 or 2 points above the contract rate, whichever was highest, and the policy rate was sitting at 1.75. If we use minimum qualifying requirements in 2019 to get that average home price of 450k, buyers had to make 100 Hundred thousand dollars. Fast forward to 2023 and we use similar minimum qualifying requirements and buyers now have to make 145000 So the affordability of houses in Canada in 2023 
is much, much less than it was in 2019. Buyers have to make a lot more money now. Further, in 2019, Canada's inflation rate was sitting at 2% versus the 6% that we have right now. A decent five-year fix at that time was 3.49 versus the 4.79 as of today. Mortgage rates went up yesterday. Further, in 2019, we had a policy rate of 1.75 compared to the 4.5% that we have as of this posting. Finally, at the beginning of 2019, the Canadian economy was projected to grow. Compare that with today when we have multiple and persistent predictions of a recession and a central bank governor that's actually trying to cause one. So, other than that extra $45,000 in required income that is needed to get that average house, an inflation rate that is 4% higher, a policy rate that is almost 3% higher, mortgage rates that are 1% higher, not to mention an inverted yield curve and multiple predictions of the recession, yes, 2019 and 2023 are very similar. It is like looking in a mirror. But, says Cathcart, there is a number of additional factors that the market has going for it going into 2023. We know the demographics are off the charts, more so than ever before. Um, the Bank of Canada is increasingly signaling that rates are now at the top. So buyers are likely feeling increasingly confident in taking on variable mortgage rates again. First, demographics. We've talked about that before on this channel just a few videos ago, how a lot of the experts are pushing the millennials as being the savior for the real estate market, in that as they jump into the market, the minute they find that bottom sweet spot, that will help to prop up prices. However, some surveys are already putting millennial home ownership at 57%, and given that the average home ownership rate in Canada is in that mid 60%, it's not clear that millennials are going to be able to prop up the market. Second, variable rate mortgages. Cathcart says that buyers are more likely to take variable rate mortgages now that the Bank of Canada has signaled it won't be raising interest rates. But that assertion is not exactly grounded in reality. The Bank of Canada has signaled that they will be pausing on interest rates, a conditional pause, a pause that is dependent upon the data, a pause that could very much be reversed if the data comes in higher, if inflation proves sticky. And the Federal Reserve has already signaled that it plans to go higher on interest rates. And if the Federal Reserve goes much higher than the Bank of Canada, that could very much disturb that pause. And Canada's bond yields, as we've mentioned so much on this channel, have also been rising, as investors think the Bank of Canada will have to reverse course on that pause. Further, given that a large swath of Canadians took on variable rate mortgages based off the advice on the Bank of Canada that interest rates would be staying low until 2023, and are now seeing the negative effects of that advice, it's not clear that trust has returned for the Bank of Canada, that home buyers are going to pile into variable rate mortgages just because the Bank of Canada has said they're going to pause. So it's not clear that variable rate mortgages are going to bring buyers back into the market either. So, in summary, the benchmark price down about 16k, the average price down about 14k, listings up 3%, sales down around 3%, and the CREA sees a banner year potentially similar to 2019 for 2023. But when we look closer at the data, when we look closer at history, we can see that there were a lot of factors that were working for the housing market in 2019 that are not so much working for it in 2023. We have a much higher policy rate, we have a much higher inflation rate, we have higher interest rates, and we have much higher house prices, meaning buyers need to save a lot more for their down payment, and they require a much higher level of income to get into those average priced houses. With that said, although we do have a lot working against home buyers going into 2023, the spring market is upon us and we are going to get a much better idea if that level of demand is sufficient enough to prop up the prices of the housing market. We'll obviously continue to have updates out on Canada's real estate market on this channel. Click like and subscribe if you want to get those updates, but for now, 